What's going on everyone? This is Brett McKay from theartofmanliness.com. Now, a handy skill every man should have is the ability to tie a few basic knots. Um, you never know when you're going to have to tie a knot, whether it's tying a canoe to the top of your car, or say your buddy falls down a ravine while you're hiking a mountain and you have to rescue him. Um, you want a knot that you know is secure, it's not going to slip when you're hoisting him up to safety. Uh, but unfortunately today, a lot of men don't know how to tie knots. And when they do have to tie something, they just kind of make a bunch of loops and passes and a jumbled mess until they've got something that feels secure. But they find out it isn't secure when the canoe comes flying off the top of their car. So to help you um, not let that happen to you, we're going to show you seven basic knots that every man should know. Let's get started. <laughs> So this first knot we're going to do is the square knot. Our British and Australian friends probably refer to it as the reef knot. Now the square knot is just your basic knot. It's essentially the knot you tie whenever you, every time you tie your shoes. Uh, it's a good knot to use when you're tying packages together or bundles together. Uh, but other than that, it's not a really strong knot. It comes loose very easily. Um, so I just limit it to those kind of basic household uses. So let's get started on the square knot. All right, to tie the square knot, just remember this one little phrase, right over left, left over right. So what you're gonna do is you're gonna take the right end of the rope and you're gonna bring it over the left end of the rope and around like so. So you have something that looks like this. And then you're gonna take the left end of the rope, which was once your right end, and you're gonna go over the right end of the rope and bring it under and around and then tighten your knot. And you got your square knot. I mean, it kind of looks like a square. <laughs> All right, so this next knot we're going to do is the bowline knot. And the bowline knot is a loop knot that's extremely, extremely secure. It's, it can withstand a large amount of pressure. Because of this, it's a great knot to use if you're mooring a boat to a dock or um, if you're lifting a buddy out of a ravine um, and you don't want the knot to slip and him to go tumbling back down. So let's get started on the bowline knot. All right, to get started with the bowline knot, the first thing you're going to do is you're going to take one end of the rope, all right, and you're going to make a small loop like so. And the, when you make the loop, you want the standing part of the rope, this part, to be underneath the, the loop. So it looks like that, all right? What you're gonna do now is you're gonna take the other end of the rope, let's break that up, and you're gonna bring it up through the loop, like so. And you go around the standing part of the rope, like that. And then you're gonna go back down the loop that you just came up. And then you're just gonna pull it tight, like so. And as you can see, you have a really secure knot that can withstand a lot of load, and you have this nice loop at the end. Now, a cute mnemonic, mnemonic device, mnemonic device that you can use to remember how to tie a bowline uh, involves rabbits. All right. So what you do is you make your rabbit hole with the tree like that. This end is your rabbit, and so the rabbit goes up the up the rabbit hole, runs around the tree, and back down the rabbit hole. And bada bing, you got a bowline knot. <laughs> All right, this next knot we're gonna look at is the two half hitch knot. It's a really basic knot, and it's a knot you'd wanna use if you're just securing a piece of rope to a pole or to a tree or to a stake. So uh, let's take a look at it right now. All right, so to get started with the two half hitch knot, what we're gonna do is we're going to wrap the rope around this lamp post that we're going to imagine as a mighty oak tree, all right? So we'll do that. And what you're gonna do now, see this is the working part of the end of the rope, and this is your standing end of the rope. You're gonna take the, the working part of the rope and you're gonna bring it underneath the standing of the rope, like so. And you're gonna make your first half hitch by going around and down through this loop here, okay? And then you're gonna tighten it to the pole, like that. And what you're gonna do now um, is you're gonna make your second half hitch by <clears throat> bringing, up, bringing the rope back around and over the standing end of the rope and down through this loop that you've just created, like that, and then tighten it like so, and there you go. You got two half hitches. All right, we're gonna take a look now at the taut line knot. The taut line knot is a neat knot because it allows you to shorten or lengthen a piece of rope depending on what you need. I use this knot all the time when I'm out camping, um, especially when I'm tying down rain flies or dinner flies, uh, because I've noticed in the middle of the night you're rain fly can get kind of loose so instead of having to move the stake in order to tighten the rope you can just slide up your taut line knot and you got a nice tight line um, for your for your rain fly so let's get started with the taut line knot
All right, so we're back to our imaginary tree here. And for now, we're going to imagine this lamp post is a tent stake, okay? So we're gonna take the rope and bring it around the tent stake like so. So we have our working end of the rope in our left hand and the standing of the rope in our right. So we're gonna take the working end of the rope and we're going to bring it underneath the standing end of the rope like that. So it looks like that. And we're gonna take the working end of the rope and we're gonna bring it down through this loop between our fingers and the pole. So we form one coil. So it looks like that. What we're gonna do now is we're just gonna repeat that. Take the working end and bring it down through this loop and form a second coil. What we're gonna do now is we're gonna take the working end of the rope and bring it back towards us and underneath the standing of the rope like that. And so you're gonna form a D, all right? So you have a loop here onto the right. And you're gonna take the working end of the rope and you're gonna bring it back around and down through that loop that you just created. So now you have three coils. So just all you have to do now is just tighten it up like so. And you got your taut line knot. So as I, as I said in the intro, you can slide it up, you can slide it down to tighten or loosen depending on your needs. <laughs> All right, this next knot we're gonna look at is the clove hitch knot. It's, the clove hitch is another knot that you can use to secure rope to a tree or to a pole or whatever. By itself, it's not a really secure knot. It can't take, withstand a lot of you know, heavy load, but it's an essential knot to uh, know to begin uh, lashings, which we'll talk about in a future video. So let's get started with the clove hitch knot. Okay, so to start off with the clove hitch, you're gonna take your rope and bring it around the pole like so. You're gonna take your working end and bring it underneath the standing end just like that. Okay, so you should look like that. You're gonna take your working end and bring it up and around the pole again. And what you're gonna do now is you're going to take the working end and you're gonna bring it down through this top loop right here, okay? Just like that, and then just pull it through and pull it tight. So what you should end up with is an X like that with the rope coming out perpendicular, like so. And that's a clove hitch. All right, now we're gonna take a look at the figure eight knot. Now the figure eight knot is what's known as a stopper knot. And what do they mean by a stopper knot? Well, it's a knot that you use at the end of a rope that you um, tie to ensure that things don't come off the rope that you might have on there. The figure eight knot is also a basic knot that um, all mountain climbers need to know. It's what you use to secure yourself into your carabiner. So if you're gonna be mountain climbing, you need to learn how to tie this knot. So let's get started with the figure eight knot. So to start off with a figure eight knot, what you need to do first is make a loop like so, so that the standing end is on top of the working end. You're gonna take the working end and bring it around the standing end like that, and then you're going to bring it up through this hoop loop right here, and then you pull it tight. And as you can see, you have kind of what a knot that looks like a figure eight, hence the name figure eight knot. And again, that is a stopper knot that you can use to ensure stuff doesn't slide off the end of the rope. All right, this final knot is the sheet bend knot. The sheet bend knot is a knot you use to tie two ropes together of unequal size. So let's take a look at the sheet bend right now. All right, so we have two pieces of rope. Um, we're gonna imagine that this rope is thicker than this rope, okay? So to make a sheet bend, um, you start off by making a bite or just a loop with the rope that's thicker. So you have something that looks like that, all right? And what you're gonna do now is you're gonna take the smaller rope and you're going to bring it up through the loop here, like that, and you're gonna bring it around the two ends here, the shorter end and the longer end of the other rope, okay? And what you're gonna do now is you're going to take the, the, the working end of this rope and you're going to bring it back through this loop that you have right here. And then you just tighten it up. And then you have a sheet bend. <laughs> 